Now, as we've discussed for much of the last week here on Washington Watch, last week's raid on former President Trump's residence in Florida was unprecedented, at least in the sense that no former president had been subject to a law enforcement raid before. But questions abound. How did the warrant come to be? Could such a warrant and raid be coordinated without the knowledge of the White House, as the White House is claiming? Joining me now to discuss this is Peter Thompson. He's a former U.S. assistant attorney with more than 20 years' experience in the Department of Justice. Peter, welcome to Washington Watch. Thank you for having me. Uh, we are excited to get your input on this because most of us, as much as we like to claim on social media, we are not experts in all of these things that come up to us. We haven't spent time in the Department of Justice, and so we don't know how things are done customarily. So we don't necessarily have the perspective on whether what's happening now is uh, within those customs. And so I, I want to start with the warrant, if we could. The warrant was released over the weekend. Uh, anything in it surprise you? Um... Yes. Uh, in fact, uh, a number of things not only surprised me, um, but absolutely shocked me. Um, so in the warrant itself, and actually, I don't think you're going to be able to see this. Um, so I made a list, and if you can see it um, right here. But this list um, identifies every document that... Um, the Department of Justice was was you know, hoping that they would find at the Mar-a-Lago residence. And let me just sort of go through with what the warrant specifies as the items that yeah. they were searching for. So the first was um, all documents with classified markings. But not only that, OK, the, the warrant also was searching for all contents um, of, of any box in which a classified document was located. So in, in addition to all contents of any box, the warrant was also seeking um, the contents of all other boxes that may have been in the same vicinity where those boxes were stored. Peter? Now, this, frankly... If, if this I could, I'd, I'd like to clarify, because most of us have not written warrants, and we certainly haven't read them, and we haven't looked for warrants before. Why is what you described, all contents in a box, why does that surprise you? What's unusual about that? Right. Well, as I said, it's, it's, it's shocking. So the Fourth Amendment requires um, that a search warrant particularly describe um, the items that are being searched for. OK. And it, it also requires that um, the location be particularly described. And here we seem to have an, an excessively overbroad warrant, one that is allowing the agents to go into uh, Mar-a-Lago, a huge compound on 17 acres with over 50 bedrooms, over 30 uh, bathrooms. And the warrant is allowing the agents to go everywhere in, in this um, compound with, with um, minor restrictions of where third, third parties might actually be occupying. Yeah. In addition to that, all outbuildings. OK, so this is effectively, I mean, a small office building they're being allowed to search. Peter? And they're being... Yeah. And, and, and for the sake of time, I'm going to have to run through some of this too quickly. So I want to bottom sure. line this. And what it sounds like you're saying is that the warrant itself might be just overbroad. And if I'm understanding, uh, that means that everything seized, if a court found it to be uh, an in, inappropriate, uh, uh, an illegal search warrant, mm. everything they seized could ultimately not be admissible. Is that correct? No, that's correct, particularly if they if they brought some charges against some individual. Right. Um, the, the warrant is clearly, clearly overly broad. It is clearly a fishing expedition. Um, it, it allows them to seize almost every document they come in, in contact with, even documents that are not identified that are in the same vicinity. And these these are the type of warrants that courts have traditionally struck down as being unconstitutional in violation um, of Rule 41 of the Federal Rules of Criminal Procedure and in violation of the Fourth Amendment. Now, Peter, I want to give you a chance to respond to some statements from the White House. Spokeswoman Corrine Jean-Pierre had this to say over the weekend. The president has been very clear uh, and unequivocal about this is that when it comes to law enforcement matters, investigation, the Department of Justice has complete, complete independence. And he has said that during his campaign. He has said that as, pres as president, we do not interfere. We do not get briefed. We do not get involved. Uh, Peter, is the Department of Justice behaving in the way you would expect them to behave if they had complete independence? 
No, I mean, I, I, I don't think so. And and the reason I say that for a number, number of reasons, one, um, it 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 is really disconcerting um, and and raises a lot of red flags on how the Department of Justice went went about this. For example, they they knew. Right. They knew ahead of time that this search warrant would, would have repercussions um, throughout the country and, and, and throughout throughout the world, actually. And knowing, for example, that the magistrate that they went to um, had earlier recused himself on a case involving President Trump uh, because he didn't think he could be impartial. The same magistrate who posted publicly comments um, you know, uh, against the, uh, the president, for, former president, attacking his m morality, um, they chose to go to that magistrate. Uh, the fact that they chose to go to that magistrate when they could have gone to another magistrate that, uh, uh, you know, um, I think there are two or three federal magistrates that, that work in that part of the district of the Southern District of Florida. But the fact they chose to that magistrate to go to that magistrate, the fact that they executed and signed off on a fishing expedition type warrant um, raises a lot of red flags with me. Peter, and it leaves me with a question as to why. Yeah. You know, why would they have done that? One other question, and we only have about a minute. Uh, the White House has repeatedly said they had no knowledge of this happening. I is that typical that something of this magnitude would be done by the Department of Justice without the White House even being aware that it was going to happen? Now, I find it very difficult to believe that that somebody at the Department of Justice would not have informed the White House. The, the, the White House is not in a lot, you know, the chain of command. But certainly this is a a, a, a an, you know, unprecedented a search warrant with 30 agents or more with with assault rifles on the former president of the United States. Um, someone who's all but declared that he's going to run for president against against the incumbent president, and for the White House not to be informed by the Attorney General's office is is beyond belief. It's just something I can't believe. And if, if I can go further, um, you know, in the White House or in the Justice Department, typically with every administration. Yeah. There's always a White House liaison that works there, and the White House liaison is is a liaison with the White House. Peter and the office of yeah. I'm unfortunately, sorry. you know, we are out of time. We need another hour, so we're going to have to do this again because I really do want to go through uh, everything that you have about the warrant. But we are out of time. Thanks so much for being with us today. Thank you very much.